Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello and welcome back to the channel, everybody. In today's video, we find ourselves in a courtroom scenario where a sovereign citizen attempts to use his religion to get out of his charges. But will it work? Yeah, I don't think so. But let's go ahead and sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Good morning, Mr. Pritchett. I have a question for you. I noticed you filed something the other day, actually it was a couple months ago, where you used the last name of McQuay. I hope I haven't been using the wrong last name. Um, how do you prefer to be called? Oh, um, are you aware that scripture state? Oh, no, he's going to play a variation of the soft tard name game. Get ready for the fun. Since 317 to do and say all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Well, now, couldn't that be interpreted as uh, do all and say all? So you should really say your name in the name of Jesus then, because wouldn't Jesus want you to be accountable for your own actions, even in a court of law? So on the record, I do also believe that there's been a mistake. Um, that legal name that if anybody here presuming me to be that name, whereas the facts and the evidence proving that I own that name or have been obligated to assume or claim it as personal identification. Well, now, what name would you like for your personal identification? That way you can use it for the rest of your life just in case you end up in another court. I mean, we all get a name when we're born from the people that love and care for us. Who gave you your name in the beginning? So what name would you like me to use? I'm, I'm happy to be flexible here. McQuay or Pritchett or... Colossians, what would you like me to use? Am I prohibited from following the teachings of Holy Scripture that says to do and say all in the name of the Lord Jesus? Look, douchebag, nobody is prohibiting you from practicing your religion. It's just that you can't use it as a shield to get out of the consequences for your actions. That's not exactly how the world works, dude. You are not prohibited from doing that. Um... I'm just asking you to be polite and answer my question as to which name you'd like me to use for you. Am I, again, prohibited from following the teaching of Holy Scripture that state to do and say all in the name of the Lord Jesus? I already answered that question. You are not prohibited. Okay. Um, you're welcome to sit down if you want. You can stay standing. Um, I'm going to refer to you as Mr. Pritchett until you correct me. <clears throat> Why would you continue to presume that that legal name is mine when there has been no facts or evidence proving that I own that name or have been obligated to claim or assume it as mine? Does the prosecutor have the facts and evidence proving that I own that name? So what name do you own? Do you have any form of identification, any mail or anything like that that uh, generally goes to your house that you can uh, show us? That will show what your name is. Otherwise, quit play, playing these damn games because the judge is about to put you in your place here in the next few minutes. The scripture state, again, are you aware that the scripture state to do and say all in the name of the Lord Jesus? Okay. Have, well, I, ever, have I ever claimed that name on record? Have I ever stated I, I own any name? I, I don't know. I'm not able to be around you all the time. So that was my question. What name do you claim? If I'm not prohibited from following the teaching of the Holy Scripture, which again state to do all and say all in the name of the Lord Jesus, then why are you asking what name do I claim? Well, because if the Lord Jesus is telling you to say all, and my question is, by what name do you go? It seems like he'd want you to answer that question and say all, as in, what is your name? But if you want to go against the teachings of the scripture, I guess you'll have something else to settle up later on. Is 
So you tell me what name you'd like me to use. Do scriptures not tell me that I am using the name of the Lord Jesus? I, I'm happy to call you Jesus if that's what you'd like. I, I don't know that that's, is, is that what you're asking? I'm asking again, if I'm not prohibited from following the teaching of the Holy Scripture, do you have a name of your own? I do. It's right here. And I don't mind you calling me that. And I'm not going to make you prove that that's my name. It'll just make conversation work better. And so that's why I was asking you um, how you'd like to be addressed. I'll just say, sir. How about that? Sounds like that works. Sir, you're going to get tired if you stay standing the whole time. Do you want to take a seat or are you going to stay standing? I just believe there's been a mistake. Why have you not dismissed this case yet, Mr. McBurney, when there has been no facts or evidence presented by the prosecutor proving that the Constitution codes, rules, and laws that the charges are based on and the charges itself apply to me and that you have personal jurisdiction over me? Oh, you gotta, oh, you gotta love this jurisdiction crap they love to pull. I mean, come on now. Are you in the United States? Yes. Well, then you are currently under the jurisdiction of the United States legal system. Are you a resident of the United States? Well, then, if you are, you are most certainly and definitely under the jurisdiction of the United States penal system. If you are a resident of Georgia, or visiting Georgia, you are still under their jurisdiction. If you committed the offense in Georgia, you are under their jurisdiction. That's what we have a trial for. Um, but because we, you and I, uh, we'll take turns. Um, you and I have had some trouble working through some things because we get in this endless loop about the scripture and, and what's your name and jurisdiction. Um, I don't get to dismiss things, but a jury can decide that the state didn't prove the charges against you. Um, we just have a little bit of road to cover to get to that trial. And we were going to handle one of those things today. How are we going to move forward with the trial again if the prosecutor has failed to present facts and evidence proving that the Constitution, codes and laws apply to me and that anybody has personal jurisdiction over me? So they've already done that, which is why we're moving forward. Um, Can I please see these facts and evidence proving that the Constitution code and rules apply to me and that you have personal jurisdiction over me? Your Honor, may I make a suggestion? Sure. Can we please, uh, before we get into the 418, let's, can we start with the Feretta hearing? That's what I'm trying to get. And then I also have um, some jail, particular jail call that I think would shed light that Mr. Pritchett does have a solid understanding of the facts and what's going on. And that would jail call would segue nicely into the 418. Okay. No, I, my thought was that we worked through the Ferretta hearing first. I was just trying to see um, how best to refer um, to the gentleman in the red jumpsuit. I'm going to call him sir um, until he asks for a different moniker. Sir, um, I appreciate your concern about personal jurisdiction. My concern is different today. And that is, whether you want to represent yourself as we move forward um, in your quest for proof of personal jurisdiction and the state's um, effort to prove the charges that have been brought against you beyond a reasonable doubt. Are you ready to talk about representation? Um, can the prosecutor present the facts and evidence proving that the Constitution codes and rules and laws apply to me? Were you born in the United States? If yes, then the Constitution most certainly applies to you. No ifs, ands, or buts. Every single word applies to you. Every code, every statute of the United States, of the state, and of the state of Georgia apply to you as they apply to everybody who lives within the United States. There are no ifs, ands, or buts. You can't pick and choose what laws you want to follow. Because if you do that, everybody gets to do that, and it would be total anarchy. 
and that anybody here has, has personal jurisdiction to even be having this hearing? Sure. You know what? I will ask him about that. But before we can do that, I need to make sure that you want to represent yourself. You've been doing a good job of that, but we've never had the conversation that I'm required to have with you to let you represent yourself. How can we move forward on a Ferretta hearing or any type of hearing if personal jurisdiction has not been proven? Do you have any evidence that there is no personal jurisdiction over you? Who is the burden of proof on? Well, now, I am going to go out on a limb and say the burden of proof is on the defendant for saying that he is not under the jurisdiction of the United States Code of Justice. So you're the one that has to prove that you are not under that jurisdiction because of that statement. The uh, judge and the court do not have to prove anything to you in that circumstance. It is you that have to provide the counter argument. And thus far, you haven't provided it. You tell me, who do you think it's on? Who is the burden of proof on? I'm asking you, who do you think it's on? And if you think... Whoever uh, is cl- who, who, who is claiming personal jurisdiction over me? I, who, who is? I'm asking who is who here is making the claim of personal jurisdiction over me? I don't know. Who do you think is? I'm asking who here is making the personal claim of jurisdiction over me? Right. Well, so I judges don't do that. So who, who is it that you think is claiming jurisdiction over you? Aren't you the one that's supposed to know that? Um, that's why I'm asking you. That's not an affirmative answer. Can you please give me an affirmative answer of who here is claiming personal jurisdiction over me? I'm wondering who you think is. Maybe no one is. Maybe no one's claiming personal jurisdiction. Is that the case? What do you think the case is? I'm asking you, is that the case? That is no one here claiming personal jurisdiction over me? It seems like the state of Georgia and Fulton County are claiming personal jurisdiction over you, but I'm wondering um, who you think it is because you want someone to prove it up. And I'm wondering who it is um, who you think is. If the state of Georgia is claiming personal jurisdiction over me, can I please see the facts and evidence proving that the Constitution codes and rules and laws apply to me and that they have personal jurisdiction over me? So let me ask you a question. What is it about you having been arrested in Fulton County? Um, what is it about you that would make you not subject to the personal jurisdiction of the state of Georgia here in Fulton County? What are you relying on to say that because of my physical location, personal jurisdiction applies to me? Well, that would be the law. That's how it works. And if you walk over to Alabama and uh, jaywalk and get arrested for jaywalking, guess who has personal jurisdiction over you? It would be that jurisdiction where you are found. Guess where you were found? You were found in Fulton County in the state of Georgia. And again, you said that the code or law says that, correct? I, that's not what I said. So you did not just say that what you are relying on to say that the state of Georgia has personal jurisdiction over me. Did you just say that, that, the, that you're relying on the law? I am. The state? And again, my question remains, where are the facts and evidence proving that the codes and laws of the state of Georgia, which you are relying on to prove jurisdiction, apply to me? So, sir... It's not my role to prove anything to you. If you want to take up a challenge later on that somehow the state lack jurisdiction over you or the police lack jurisdiction over you, you're free to do that. I don't have a written motion in front of me that challenges that. Even if I did, we couldn't go forward on that till we work through who is representing you. And that's the conversation we need to have. Does the state have this evidence here with them today? I don't know. You don't get to ask them any questions like that until we figure out who your lawyer is. Are you representing yourself or should I appoint a lawyer to represent you? We always come back to that. We can't move forward with your deep question about personal jurisdiction until we figure out who represents you. And I'm happy to appoint someone. In fact, I've done that before. Are you aware that scriptures teach that in 1 John 1, 
that we have an advocate in heaven, Jesus Christ. Am I prohibited from following the teaching of Holy Scripture? No, we've covered that one. How old are you? Is this a godly institution? How old are you? Mr. Before we move forward, can you please help me better comprehend the nature and cause of the actions and proceedings against me? Sure. It is alleged that in November of 2019, you and Mr. Robinson went into a house that had been rented out for the evening by a bunch of college students. They were flying out of town the next day. You went in with Mr. Robinson. You were assisted in getting into that house by Ms. Riley and Ms. Kalish. Once inside, you beat and robbed most of the occupants of the house. You got a bunch of drugs, you got a bunch of money, and you left. Yeah, now I can see why you're attempting this rather piss poor muddying the waters fallacy on the judge. And to be quite perfectly honest with you, it's not working out for you. That particular uh, fallacy may work on the layman, but you're dealing with a uh, professional judge here. So. Try it on somebody else. It was an arm robbery. It was a home invasion. And um, Ms. Riley drove you and Mr. Robinson and Ms. Kalish back to your friend, Mr. Coleman's house. Mr. Coleman, you knew from an earlier case that we'll be talking about to which you've already entered a plea of guilty, had your probation revoked and your first offender status revoked. So that's what we're talking about. But that's not news to you. Um, I'd love to get through this process about whether you want to represent yourself with the assistance of Jesus or anyone else you want to rely on, or if I should appoint a lawyer to represent you. But we have to do that before we can get to this personal jurisdiction thing or any other legal concern you may have about this case. How can we have a proper hearing again if personal jurisdiction has not been proven with facts or evidence? Again, is this a godly institution? Mr. Hiles? So, uh, in reviewing some of the jail calls in preparation uh, for this hearing, uh, I think one of the things that Mr. Pritchett brought up last time and one of his concerns was that we did not have the minutes to show that the indictment was returned in open court. Right. I but saw I, that. That was the I, Mr. McQuay yeah. um, letter. But understanding that, um, there are no minutes of the grand jury. However, all of the uh, indictments are returned in open court when the sheriff's office, along with the presenting attorney, uh, physically brings the uh, indictments over, the judge reviews it and signs that form. Um, that seems to be the proof that he's looking for. Um, and so I'm, I would defer to you on how to obtain that, where, where the records are kept um, for the cases that are indicted, that the judge's signature is. But if I need to get those records from the day that this indictment was, uh, this case was presented to the grand jury and then signed off by the presiding judge, I would be more than happy to do that. You can. I don't know that that's necessary yet. I'm hearing um, Mr. Pritchett have a more fundamental concern about personal jurisdiction. It's sort of black letter law. Um, if you are alleged to have committed a crime within the physical jurisdiction of Fulton County, Fulton County has personal jurisdiction over you. But um, I'm happy to let Mr. Pritchett, Mr. McQuay, Jesus, or a lawyer appointed to represent Mr. Pritchett um, explore that. It's just not something we do orally. That's not the format. And um, I need to figure out through you, Mr. Pritchett, if you are going to represent yourself. You have a right to do that. Um, I'm not trying to stand in the way of that, but I can't legally let you do that until we have a conversation that makes me comfortable that you understand the consequences of deciding to represent yourself. Um, you are able to do it, um, but we have to have that conversation first. And you're aware of that. You're the one who mentioned the Ferretta hearing. Um, so I would like to work through that, um, but you need to uh, begin to engage those real basic questions like, how old are you? I'm not even asking your name anymore. How is this indictment even applicable to me if I have not been named, nor if you do not know my God-given Christian name? And while you're at it, can the prosecutor please present the facts and evidence 
again, proving that I am governed by your constitution, codes, and laws, or that I ever owed a duty of allegiance and subjected myself to a state in violation of the first of the Ten Commandments. Okay, so you uh, want to go by the Ten Commandments. Well, uh, you did uh, commit armed robbery, so that is the theft portion of the Ten Commandments. And then, uh, well, what's that commandment about coveting your neighbor's uh, goods? I mean, something like that. So you coveted your neighbor's goods. That's one commandment issue right there. And then you decided to go after it through theft. So allegedly, anyway, allegedly. So, but still, in this case, the jurisdiction you are within the jurisdiction here. You, if you did commit these the acts, then well, you will be tried for them. So, Mister Pritchett, tell me how old you are. Is this a godly institution? How far did you go in school? Before we move forward, does this court recognize and acknowledge the supremacy and sovereignty of Jesus Christ and the Church established on earth? So that's a personal choice, and I'll let you rank it however you want to rank it. Are you not aware that your law, Public Law 97-280, states that the word of God, the Bible is the word of God, and that there is a recognition of the need to apply the teachings of Holy Scriptures? Are you trying to apply these teachings, or are you not subject to the laws of the United States government? It sounds like you can read, because you've been reading, and I know you can write, um, so I'm able to work through part of this checklist, because I've read some of the things that you've mailed to the clerk of court. Um, have you ever worked before? Where, are the, where is the evidence of any legal obligation for me to participate in proceedings that I have not been named? I don't think you have a legal obligation. Um, you don't have to participate, but then I'm gonna need to appoint a lawyer to represent you. Um, and then I will rely on him or her um, to make decisions in your case. You're welcome to be in court with this lawyer, but if the way you choose to participate is by engaging in this circular silliness that you've been doing right now, then I probably have to ask you to wait back in the holding cell and then your lawyer would have to represent you with you not in the courtroom. And that rarely works out well for a defendant. So whatever name you want, you're a defendant and um, you need to figure out what you think is the smartest way forward because we are going forward. Um, we're done with the circles. Um, the next time you come back here, if you choose not to participate and you don't have to in this Ferretta hearing that we're going to have, the next time you come back here, the lawyer who's going to be representing you at your trial will be here. And that's who I'll be talking with. I won't be talking with you. On the record is there any evidence I have a legal obligation to recognize the court as sovereign or what the court re represents as sovereign? You have no obligation. Um, you can sit quietly and just see what happens. And maybe you get acquitted <clears throat> and then you finish serving your sentence so on your other is, case. Where is the evidence again that you or whoever is claiming personal jurisdiction has any authority at all over me to even proceed forward with trial or any hearing? Where is this facts and evidence? If the prosecutor has it, can I please see it? Actually, he does have something that I'd like to hear. Can we hear that jail call now? Sure. Uh, Miss um, Nelson, will you please give me the ability to share my screen? Oh, that's me now. Oh, okay. Um, you can. <clears throat> is a prepaid collect call from an incarcerated individual at Fulton County Jail. This call is not private. It will be recorded and may be monitored. If you believe this should be a private call, please hang up and follow facility instructions to register this number as a private number. To its thank you for using Securus. You may start the conversation now. Hello. Hey. Yo, what's up, man? How you feeling? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good, man. You got the shower and stuff. Chilling on. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. You had a call <clears throat> yesterday, and um, 
I had um I had just walked in public. Yeah. And um and I didn't have no money on the phone. Then you just called again and I forgot my password. Oh so yeah, 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 yeah. I'm glad you called back, yeah. Sure so I had saw that thing on the case file, it's yeah, like fifty eight yeah. pages. Yeah. So what is it talking about? I mean it's fifty eight pages only because you know, it's just okay, so it's just a, a motion for the state to introduce evidence of whatever they're trying to say happened last on uh, on the last case. And, and the fifty eight pages is really just um I believe like a police report based on the, the case report. I object. How is this proof that the constitution codes, rules and laws like, are the state applied to me? <clears throat> Everybody has personal jurisdiction over me. First couple of pages is saying like they're trying to do that to basically um to try and establish um gang criminal activity basically. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, so it ain't yeah, it's whatever it is. It's just it's just it's just Mr. Lyle's doing Mr. Lyle stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'm ignoring the question. I'm trying to evade it, Mr. McBurn. I'm tabling your objection for right now. I don't know, but it's like, it is like, you understand, when I, if you guys see the last court, I wish, I wish, I do wish you guys be there so you can understand fully what's going on, but it's like, if you, the last time, like, last time it was me asking for specific evidence, so it's right. like... And I also saw the letter that you sent to the clerk. Oh, it's on, it's on the case? Yeah, and she sent the letter back. Oh, she put it on the case too. Oh, okay, it's on the case file. I didn't know. Okay. Mhm. Usually they don't file that, but I guess hey man, whatever. But yeah, that was just me asking for um the minutes of the grand jury, and she responded back saying that there are no minutes of my indictment being returned in open court, which is basically just <laughs> exhibit A to the fraudulent activity that for the county um does um, on the regular. Yeah, on the regular. Man, I just did that because the judge was so so far in his ego last time of claiming jurisdiction. Mm-hmm. The evidence was that the jurisdiction of the jurisdiction was the indictment. And I was like, okay, well, it's not even a valid indictment. So I, I did that because to show him that it's not even a valid indictment for you to be relying on it as evidence. Right. It's just, it's just them playing, playing games. It's just them playing games. Man. Yeah, yeah. And also, you know, it's a lot of things are really being turned upside down and shaken up in Fulton County yeah. um, because of this whole Trump situation and the corruption that has been continually going on in Fulton County. So yeah. basically the senator, who happens to be the brother-in-law of the governor of Georgia, passed a law saying that they are like investigating all these district attorneys for wrongdoing. Okay, mm-hmm. and apparently the 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 head DA Sandy Willis is you know been talking about coming out with an indictment against Trump, and in that indictment, all the prosecutors throughout the state also being a part of it. So they're resigning, they're quitting. Everybody's like going crazy. So the the poll that Trump, the Republicans that they have, they <clears throat> put this bill in effect. So now everything is being looked over with a fine tooth comb. Mm. Okay, Fulton County illegally um, having these secret grand jury indictments and doing all that. There's so much uncovered corruption that has been done there for so long but now it's like the spotlight is on them yeah i know that is crazy and that's yeah. why see and that's why even going the next time i i kind of want i kind of want some spotlight and then be some way you know because like usually his hearings are recorded hopefully this one is and it's actually published because mm-hmm. last time they kind of be taking me off or deleting my part whatever they do but hopefully it is published on his page, but like I said, I need it needs some spotlight because um I'm doing the same thing they doing. This in and and this sort of as an as an individual, like you know, 'cause mm-hmm. it's like you claiming this jurisdiction, this authority, 
And like I said, I'm not going to call them asking for evidence. So you're trying to bring, you're trying to introduce higher evidence and new evidence that why can't you? Something they did before, and that's when they asking for. Thank you. Right, exactly. And that is sort of on the same lines of that 404B crap. And yeah, Dempsey yeah, broke down and talked about how, you, how illegal that was. As a matter of fact, it's so illegal, and that judge right there knows that. That's how that case with that white man that left his baby in the car, yeah. they try to do that. To, to, in, in that case, they try to bring up the fact that he was having an affair or whatever. The Georgia Supreme Court overturned that case because they're like, that is irrelevant. That has nothing to do with the situation at hand. Okay? So they always try to play the same foolish, illegal games. It is like you're trying to use this and that, and nothing of that situation was proven, you know, against me. Like, nothing was proven. Nothing as far as me was proven at all. There was no proof beyond me or anything with regard to that. And if you try to bring up a plea or this and that, no, I never played a game for anything. And and he initially had on the case file Ferretta hearing. That, that's gone. Then now he has pro se. Now those are his words. Okay, first of all, how are you just going to put pro First of all, pro se is a formal hearing. Okay, guys, I've had enough of this BS. That just went way too far. I mean, all those other conspiracy theories and all that, okay, whatever, believe what you want. But calling pro se a hearing when it's actually a term for representing yourself, yeah, that's just flat out stupid right there. So at any rate, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I mean, it was incredibly stupid, so I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.